The paint process on any restoration is just that, it's a process. There's a lot of steps to do to get a good paint job. You really have to start with good quality body work and before that good quality metal work. And on our S71 Olds project, uh, we had started by doing a complete frame off restoration on this car and replacing a bunch of steel, doing a bunch of body work. And uh, now we're to the point of the final paint application. And when I say final paint, what I'm referring to is the concept that we use in our shop which uh, dictates that we paint all the parts separately. And the reason for that is uh, when you paint the car apart, you get better coverage on the door jam areas and on the back sides of panels and things like that. Uh, but it's risky. If you paint the whole car uh, separately and then put it together and be done with it, you're risking panels not matching. You know, the fender might not match the door so well. The door might not match the quarter panel especially when you're dealing with a high metallic color like we are on the S71 Olds. So our recent strategy has been to paint the pieces and clear all the door jams, clear the jam areas that uh, you have limited access to once the car is together. And then we bolt all the sheet metal together with the outside of the car in just base coat. And this allows us to uh, work on the car without worrying about scratching it or you know causing any problems and then when the car is basically uh, done mechanically we'll roll it back into the paint booth mask the whole thing spray a couple layers of color on the outside to assure that we have a proper color match from panel to panel the metallic pattern matches and then we clear the whole thing and it looks like it was all painted uh, at one time so like I said it's a process but the results pay off. The other challenge on this car is that it's got a stripe that goes basically all the way around the car, so the panels have to be assembled so you know the stripe positioning from the fender to the door to the quarter panel. Now you'll notice that the car is not solid blue as it sits in the paint booth. It's got a few areas of primer on it, and those are touch-up areas because during the assembly process, uh, the car might have gotten scratched. Uh, so Nathan went back and spot primed and sanded and feathered those areas in. And then he sanded the whole thing with uh, from 800 to 2000 grit sandpaper. And this is to make the top coats get ready to accept another couple layers of color. And once all those layers are sanded, Nathan will clean the whole car with wax and grease remover and a tack cloth. And then of course it all gets masked and masked to the floor of the booth so that nothing gets underneath and then the uh, the process begins and we're going to paint this one in an inverse fashion so the process involves painting a white band all the way around the car because the stripes will be white and then once the white paint has uh, cured Nathan will apply a couple layers of an intercoat clear which is a matte clear coat designed to protect that first layer of paint uh, in case something goes wrong with the stripe application, uh, we can go back and remove the top coat of the stripe without hurting the base white underneath. Now the stripe design on this car was kind of tricky. Uh, it's a very similar design to a stock 442, which has uh, multiple stripes that go around the belt line of the car and over the wheel arches, and then there's some matching stripes down the hood. So the tricky part is getting them in the right place. I mean, what you really have to do is kind of establish what we call the baseline, and then build the stripes up from there. So the first line is the most important, and we're using an FBS brand stripe tape. Uh, we've had some good success with these, and they come in various thicknesses and various levels of flexibility to do tight corners and radiuses and all that kind of stuff. So Nathan went around and established the middle of the car uh, for the baseline, and then started adding stripe tape to that. If you look at the stripe design, you've got a quarter inch white stripe, then an eighth inch break in between, and then I believe it's an inch and a half of white through the middle, then another eighth inch, and then another white quarter inch stripe, and then the top edge of the whole stack. And you can build that just by applying more and more tape to the car in the various widths, and you'll do yourself a favor by using standard width tape in your stripe design so that you don't have to do a razor knife you know, pull down the whole length of the car to make a custom width stripe. So once you get that baseline down, you can just stack those other tapes and get a nice clean stripe design. The trickiest parts are the wheel arches because they're curved and they're also contoured on a cutlass. 
So Nathan had, uh, you know, quite a time laying out the stripes so that they didn't have corners or peaks, you know, that it was a nice smooth radius. And he was doing this, uh, you know, over white paint. So there were several times when, you know, he would be laying the stripe out and finally just threw his hands up in the air saying, hey, I'm snow blind. You know, I can't even see what I'm doing at this point. And when that happens, you know, which you probably will, you just got to step back. You got to step away from the car, look at it from far away, you know, kind of regroup. Uh, and get back to it. And all told, I think the stripe layout on this car took us every bit of eight hours from start to finish, including the hood. So be prepared to spend a lot of time laying stripes out.